So I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what um, running lean really is and, and where it came from. So it, it is a synthesis of three concepts or three methodologies, customer development, lean startup, and bootstrapping. And I'm not going to go into lots of depth. There's a lot of content out there on all three things. So I'm not going to define each one um, in great detail. But I will um, just cover the, the key takeaways that at least I, I derive from them. So, so customer development is a term that was coined by Steve Blank, and I had a quote earlier by him. He's a seasoned entrepreneur in his own right. He has started nine companies. His last one was a huge, um, huge success, and now he's semi-retired and, and actually f uh, focused on teaching entrepreneurship. So he teaches at Stanford and Berkeley, and you've, many of you have probably, probably heard his lectures or, or heard about him. Um, but he, he observed that middle where, where many companies um, kind of get lost in the middle where they're just building products. And in the dot-com days, that was actually reflected in a, in, in a, to an extreme where companies went out. And one of the examples, he wrote a book called The Four Steps to Epiphany, which I know many of you are familiar with. But one of the early case studies that he opens, one, that he opens with is the online groceries uh, example, the web van case study where they spent, um, they, they raised close to a billion dollars, and all that time they spent in building infrastructure for this company. And their IPO, when they went public, was not them launching their, was, was, was not them reaching revenue or reaching profitability. It was them doing their initial launch of the, of the product uh, to customers. It was not really an initial public offering, but an initial product offering. And that just tells you how they spent so much time in the middle um, building this infrastructure for something that hadn't, been thoroughly tested. So I'm sure they did their focus groups and they did their surveys and, and realized that this was a big market. Um, but once they put this out there back in the 90s, the general public was not ready for online grocery shopping. Even today, not. I, I, I would, if I ask how many people actually sh you know, do grocery shopping online, I, I think the numbers will be very low. So th that was an example of where there was not enough customer risk being mitigated along the way. And so shortly after they launched, um, the company really unraveled. They had too much, too much uh, baggage, and they unraveled and, and went bankrupt. And that was one of the biggest dot-com failures. Um, so he had coined this term customer development because he believes that you have to have a parallel track. So while you're building products, you have to have a parallel track where you're also developing and building uh, your relationships with customers. And that's where the customer development uh, term kind of came from. Um, and the, the big mantra there is one of getting outside the building. And what that really means is that the answers, as much as we'd like them to be on our compilers and our computers and our labs, they don't really exist in those places. That's where we do the work of building solutions. But we have to go outside the building to go and interact with customers, have direct contact with customers, and bring that learning back into the labs, into the compilers, and, and build, build the best products possible. Okay. So Lean Startup is a term that was coined by Eric Ries. He was, um, he's a seasoned entrepreneur in his own right. He had, um, he had raised money from Steve Blank before, which he cratered um, and happily talks about it. Uh, but he, he, he went back to him to, uh, to, to get another angel round. And, and at that point, Steve Blank had started teaching this class on customer development and forced Eric to audit that class as a condition of, uh, of taking, taking the, the angel round from him. And so for Eric and his co-founder, that was an easy value proposition. It was, you know, if I, if I take a class once a week, I get the funding, that's easy. But he hadn't realized how profound some of these customer development ideas would have on, on, him, on himself. Um, so Eric is kind of like me. He has a technical background. He's, he has spent a lot of time in software, um, agile development, extreme programming type of things. Uh, He's also had a big interest in lean manufacturing and lean thinking. And so he began to take the ideas of customer development and synthesize them into what, he, what eventually became the lean startup. And the company at the time they were working on was, was one that was called IMView. Um, and that's where they did a lot of their early experiments with lean startup. And eventually that's, that became the lean startup um, that we know today. But the big idea there is one of iteration. So rather than uh, if, if, you're, if you're given a, a certain time window, say you've got six months to go test an idea, rather than doing one release cycle, one big release, what we challenge ourselves with is can we do 10 or 20 of those? And do we even have to build software? Do we even have to rebuild the final product? Can we test these with enough of a proxy to, to still learn? And we'll see a lot of those ideas reflected there. But that's the basic concept of, of Lean. 
So I'll also kind of dispel one of the myths. And even with the workshop, I had a few people email me and said that you know we're we're very lean because we don't have a lot of money. And so a lot of people look you know look at this term uh, lean startup and they think of it as being cheap or almost look at it as bootstrapping. And it is a is it is it is not an accurate definition, but it's not even that far off. So if you go back to Lean, the original lean thinking, the, uh, the big idea there is one of eliminating waste. And so maximizing our existing resources, being efficient with existing resources, identifying forms of waste that stand between us and the customer, customer value, and eliminating those. And so being efficient with resources, capital happens to be one of those resources. And so for that reason, it's not that far of a definition, uh, far off of a definition, but the measure of progress in lean startup is not being efficient with money, but being efficient with our most scarce resource, which isn't even money, but it's time. Um, so we only have a finite amount of time just in general on this earth, but with our startups, we even have a smaller amount of time, and we want to be as efficient as possible. And what we want to maximize in, in the shortest amount of time is learning and learning about customers. So for me, the most succinct definition of a lean startup is a company that maximizes their learning about customers per unit time. And if you, if you use that definition, that really captures to me the essence of what being a lean startup is about. And then bootstrapping is something that I've been doing. And again, this is something that a lot of people also kind of misconstrue. They, they look at bootstrapping purely in a funding sense. So they look at it as being you know, heroic. I didn't have to raise any money, and I was able to build this company. But if you even look at the best bootstrappers, many of them start bootstrapping, but there is this point where they all went and raised, um, they actually raised money to accelerate their businesses. Um, so this was a term that was coined by someone here in town, Bijoy, which I'm sure a lot of you know as we are here in Austin. Um, a, a few years ago, he, he started uh, sharing this concept of right action, right time. And it really resonated with me at a philosophical level because I had been in a startup and like many people in, in startups, I woke up every day with a hundred things to do. I had a priority list of a thousand, but I had to just figure out what those hundred things were. And it was very, it was hugely chaotic. And this was something that really resonated because it was a way to say, you don't have to worry about all those thousands or hundreds of things. You have to only focus on a few key things that matter and just do those and, f and ignore the rest. Um, and so I tried to do those in the, in the earlier stages. So it, it was a very philosophical thing. When Lean Startup came out, I actually began to see how you could make that actually work, how you could actually identify what those key actions, in our case, key metrics would be for your business based on where you are, and really just focus on those, and in, in this case, focus on how we can mitigate risk or how we can, we can maximize learning um, in the shortest amount of time. So for me, the two things became very complementary, and you'll see a lot of those <laughs> ideas baked in here as well.